Hey, Somerville, back again, Janet Cormier, Artist Scat with the Scat family in the house, yes. And we have a wonderful artist. I know I say this, but we only get the wonderful Somerville artist here. And today we have Ann Johnstone. And I love that you have Stone in your last name because <laughs> it's so solid, you yes, know. And is. Ann and I met a long time ago. I interviewed you many years mm -hmm. ago when we used to actually go to the artist's homes. And you let us in. <laughs> and I remember you had the coolest place. And then the floor, can I just tell the floor story sure. real quick? That she had this beautiful floor, but she was afraid to paint because of getting, getting paint on it. Was that it? Oh, I, was, I had a, a rug, on the a wall to wall rug. And so in order to paint, I ripped up the rug. And the resulting floor was all full of uh, contractors' marks. Oh, OK, because I remember you also like painted over the floor like. Uh, well, that was that was the contractor's marks. I oh, think. okay. So, oh, so I've been living a lie, <laughs> but it, but still, a very cool home in Somerville in which she creates magnificent art. It's creative, it's energy, and a wonderful palette. So, welcome to the show. Thank you. And um, I am glad that you could come on the show and share your work with us. Me too. You will be your work will be here for the month of April. Yes. And uh, it, it's so cool. It's just really, really nice. The style, the volume of color, the, the amount of texture. Well, you know, all of you are listening to me talk. Let me hold up a piece. Can I start with this one? Yes. And this is um, Adelaide. Adelaide and the Bug. OK. And can you tell us about this? Yes, this is a painting that I had I remade from something that uh, I had worked on previously. I, I ripped part of it up and um, and found a new image in it. And when I was doing it, uh, I was aware that Adelaide's face was very serious. And I had just been discussing with a friend how I take everything in my life so seriously and how I should lighten up. Um, so <laughs> I, I think maybe the bug is, um, is uh, part of lightening up um, with, with the image and also the, the opposite colors of uh, yellow and purple are, are deliberate there. Because together they're brown, right? Together they're brown and uh, and they're they're very impactful when they're next to each other. It, it's actually hard, usually hard for me to look at them together but I think with her figure taking up most of the uh, image they work well together. And when you said I was thinking um, that you'd started this then you did it over and then I started thinking yeah and she ripped up that rug and did the same thing to her floor. So see, artists, you can find images. Sometimes you, you don't know where it is. You have one idea. Right, right. And then you start playing with your canvas Absolutely. or where you're working. Like some people even flip it upside down. They, you know, they the use time. mirrors. Yes. Now, do you make your own can This isn't a real can. What is this? Mirror? This is panel. And I, this is a panel that I bought okay. uh, at Blick. So. But you can do this, and the colors are very rich. When you come in, um, Anne is not shy about texturing. No. So, and, and it almost looks encaustic, which we we're talking about. Yes, I do use I use uh, mixed media, and the media is collage, acrylic, and wax. And the way I use wax is uh, once I have an image kind of gelled. Um, over the, over the uh, collage that I put down. Then I pour wax over the image and take a palette knife and, uh, and scrape. well, scrape it away, but also um, mush it around so it covers everything. Um, and then I paint over the wax. So that's so, a long process. Well, it, it is a long process. Um, and yet it can happen very quickly. It, it also happens very slowly and, and frustratingly sometimes because I can't find an image that I like. Um, now, when you do the, 
the wax. You said you use beeswax? Beeswax, yes. Now I'm trying to visualize this. So it's on a pot in your, on your uh, stove? Yeah, I have, I have a, um, an electric... Um, Oh, one of the okay. We all know we're not we're not kitchen people, but we know what you mean. Yes. The electric electric range. Thank you. That's what it is. And so I melt the wax on one of it, and I keep stirring it around, uh, so that so that it doesn't just burn burn off. Um, and then when I have enough, I, which is always kind of tricky to to de Figure decide. Out. Yes. Um, then I pour it over the, uh, the, the surface that I'm working on. Wow. So the, and it's healthier than encaustic because it's beeswax, right? Well, it's, I've been told that encaustic is actually very dangerous. Yeah. And you have to wear a mask and everything. And so I do wear a mask, although not a, not a huge, big mask you know, that would cover seen... my whole face. But I wear a mask and... Um, that's why I keep stirring the beeswax around so that the fumes don't just just evaporate into the... How did you come up with this technique? It was by chance. I, I don't really remember why I had any wax, what I was doing with wax, but I remember once I had uh, a little 12 by 12 image, like, or maybe... 16 by 17 inch um, painting and um, and some wax got on it and I took a piece of uh, cardboard and tried to scrape it off and then I painted on top of it and the painting on top of it felt so wonderful it felt like you I was painting on butter oh and, that's a great feeling yeah oh I love that yeah see so a lesson for you artists you're actually giving us lessons even before I ask for them is experimenting. Oh, experimenting. And then yes. nothing is really wrong because you right. discover one. Nothing is wrong, especially because if you don't like something, if I don't like something in the images that I make, I just cover it over with more collage and more paint and then put another layer of wax on. And, um, and then eventually I get an image that, is, that feels right. It says something to me. And I love that because then you build upon, and sometimes, I can't always do this, but sometimes you can retain the part you like. Now, sometimes yes. it doesn't always happen yes, for me. Yes. And then you build on that. And um, you can't see it on, oh, well, this piece is what, which, um, um, out of reach? Yes, out of reach. Out of reach. Um, when you come to see the exhibit in April, you'll be able to look around the edges and you'll see like there's dripping. Yeah. It, that's what makes the painting exciting because you have the painting looking at you, but then you have the technique, which is really intriguing. So tell us about this piece, your inspiration or your... Well, this piece, I, I had to collage over a few times before I, before I began to see an image. And then when I saw it, um, I had a, some very dark pieces of collage amidst um, a more a paler, more pastel collage work, and um, and so I saw this bird in the painting almost before I started painting on it, and just developed the image of the bird, and then um, then this object next to it, which is sort of like a tree, between a tree and a flower and a bud, and <laughs> uh, it's just something growing, and, uh, and that there's a little uh, pink flower at the top, which the bird is stretching for and can't get to, so that's why I called it out of reach. I should say that the, um, the collage that I use are supermarket circulars. Oh. Images from supermarket circulars. I, I used to use pretty, I just chop them up horizontally and use everything. And now I tend to go more for um, the images that I really like in them because um, I, I've. Well, the color, they're in color and yeah. the, the photography of it, I can see that. You should, they should be paying you. <laughs> so, supermarkets, I mean, you should take a look. 
because I think you should contact Anne because she's doing, she's making your food look even better because there's color in <laughs> I'm it. I'm changing it into something that, hopefully changing it into something that it wasn't quite in the beginning. Um, like I, I take numbers and make them into eyes and um, different things. What did I do? Well, recycling some items. And yes, then, yes, recycling, definitely. And then um, mixing the, the images up, and then with the, with the wax, it just creates this beautiful layering, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very rich. Now, I wanted to ask you, are you working flat, or are you working I on I work an on an easel. You do? Yes. So, is the, so then it really is dripping. Well, I, I work on an easel, but I should, when I pour the wax, I'm working on a flat, I'm working on the floor, I'm working on a flat surface. Okay, and then you so. wait for it to cool a little? Uh, no, the, the best thing to do is to take a palette knife or something and um, smush the wax around right away because otherwise it, it so. hardens and you, you can't, you don't have a, the surface isn't completely covered. So then you're first laying down the colors and the collage. Yes. And then the, col the collage, the color, and and with the color, the image, and then the the wax, and then more um, color, and potentially changing the image depending on. Um, like I I tend to get very busy in my work sometime, and I need to pair pair the image down a little, quiet it down a little. So uh, that's what I do with the color when I paint on top of the wax. Well, when I was asking you too about the easel, I was wondering if you walk away from a piece and then do that squinting thing when oh, you look at it. And I turn it, the painting upside, in the beginning stages, I turn it upside down a lot. And I also have a mirror in the You're back. the first artist I've met that uses the mirror technique in a long time. Yeah. Well, the mirror is really good. Uh, what I've also found is good is if I take um, a, uh, an iPhone photo of the image and somehow s making the image smaller and looking at it, it helps me to see uh, compositional things that, that you, you maybe I, I missed Yeah, in, just by looking at the real piece. When, when you're working on something, you get so wrapped up in it and, and there are things that you like, that you want to have, that you want to show or that you want to retain, but sometimes they don't work with the image as a whole. So taking so. a photo helps with that. So yes. you're old school and new school. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, you have to be. I'm not that good with my phone, so, but I, when you see this, it's, it's the lighting, the shadowing, that you, the audience, will see. You're going to be really amazed because you're going to have to walk up close to it and then step away, step away, and you'll see that it's very rich. Like you're going to be, wow, I can't believe that. And it's layers and it's very intimate. You know, you feel like very close to the work yeah. with this layer. And um, I, I just, I'm very excited by the work. I think it's beautiful. Thank you. And, oh. D well, I, I just wanted to say about the layering. Layering is really important to me. I remember when I was a kid growing up, we had a house in Vermont that used to be an old coffee house. And at one point there was a dance hall. Um, it sounds so cool. On top of, of the main house, which eventually got ripped down. But I remember walking up there and there, were, there was graffiti on the wall and, and things being, you know, like paper being ripped off. And My kind of place. Yeah, it was fascinating. And, and so um, that, that image of going up to this old dance hall and seeing these, uh, the wall there has stayed with me for a long time. The um, texture. The textures and also the, just the, the richness of the surface that you know, when you, when you put something, glue something down and then rip it off, and then glue something down and rip it off, eventually you have just a fascinating... Um, piece of work. Piece, actually, yes. In, in fact, right now in, on Facebook, there's this thing called involuntary painting, and a lot of the images that are shown are um, walls with things having been ripped off or... Um, 
you know, paper being ripped off and put on and ripped off and put on. That, I, I love the idea of you, that the, the restaurant store, the whatever, the coffee house store is wonderful, uh -huh. is fabulous. Um, and when, I like going to see construction too, and, and then seeing old buildings, like in Europe, they save old buildings. Yes. And, um, oh, can you just hand me that yes. one? And I love the layers because nothing is perfect. And you see the aging process, and you see the, the light, the way it hits. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. Now, this piece is entitled Stressed Out. Out. And many of you may identify with this. <laughs> Tell us about this. Well, this was a piece that uh, I started working on in a different way than I usually work. I had just found out that if you combine spackle and gesso, it creates a really interesting surface and that crackles and um, changes as you let it dry. So I tried that, and, but I wasn't satisfied with just putting the gesso on. There were, there were objects like this little thing. I, I don't know what it is. It has screws in it. It looks very um, electrical or something. Um, I put that down. and. And there are some um, bumps under here. I don't know what I have down under there. Um, but I, when I had, you know, that kind of initial enthusiasm of throwing stuff on a surface, you know, it's so exciting. But then I didn't like the, the result. Um, and so I wanted to do something else with it. And... I, I used, I think I used um, some palm tree bark and... Um, now, wait a minute, you have palm tree bark just hanging around the house? Well, well my sister lives in California and okay. she sends it to me. Um, so I have palm tree bark and, um, and bubble wrap and old, uh, old paint from when I scrape off a painting and have have paint strips lying around. And then I also have the... Um, the paint strips, are those, because I, I can't see it, those the pink, the orange lines? Um, they're right here. They're, they kind of look like a mask around the mm -hmm. eyes. Um, and what people can't see is that even from the back, you've left the fabric so that when you're cheese seeing cheesecloth, you can see the edges coming off too. So it's... It's moving. This, all of her paintings move. Yeah. There, there's a gentleness about them, but they're, um, they're restful, but you have a lot of, with the layers, it's surprising. You have lots of surprises. That's it. You have lots of surprises in Antwerp. They give work. me lots of surprises, too. <laughs> because you're looking and you think you got it, and then all of a sudden, wow, look at what else she did. Right. And that comes, too, from having the kind of eye that sees possibilities in scraped-off walls. Yes. Not everyone can do that. Um, some people like everything clean. You know, it, it has to, it's sterile. I like making, I generally like making a mess before. Yes, yes. Let me just say yes <laughs> for making the mess. Yes. Yes. You heard and, that first and then And then from the mess, um, uh, finding, finding whatever is there that wants to um, surface. And, and I try very much in my work to uh, use my unconscious mind. I don't go th to a canvas or a surface without, with a predis, pre... Um, Disposi dis I know what you mean. Um, if you can think of the word, you can pre call a that's a pre not It's not prearranged, but with a pre... Um, thought <laughs> with with a thought with, a, with a sketch you know I never sketch preconceived I, preconceived I know I, I never sketch before I do a painting I sketch in sketchbooks um, but I never got the sketching on canvas or anything because it takes away and I never yeah. play I never can do lines like that yeah I, I still need to throw down color yes yes throw down color and throw down whatever stuff. you can find yes and, and, so, and you need glue. You need um, what kind of gel medium, gel medium, or 
um, gel, me, yeah. Any of those that will create a mess because we, yes. we coined it. Yes to the mess, people. That's the way to go. <laughs> That's your school of, of teaching, of art. Yes to the mess. Yes. And believe me, I believe in that. Now, we're going to move for a minute. And when you come to see this piece, you will be fascinated because you really have to squint and look at the layers. And for a relatively small piece, it's very impactful because mm -hmm. it has so much going on. And it seems like you couldn't possibly fit all that. And yet it's balanced. It doesn't throw you. You know, you look at it and it, it makes sense. Mm. And when you see the title, then if you, whew, it really makes sense. <laughs> so I just want to jump over here for a minute and then we can come back because I have some other questions. Yes. But this piece which is one of your large... Now, I was going to ask you about scale. Which scale do you usually work in? I work in all different scales. Um, I do these 12 by 12s, but I also work um, 48 by 46. Oh, you do? Can you uh, even pick them up by the time well, you finish? Well, that's... I, I don't work very often in that scale because I, it's getting to the point where it's it's painful, my physically painful to pick them up I was and to say, transport them. That would be several, that's pounds of, yeah, of work yeah. and pounds of art. And yes. So, wow, that's, a, that's, it's like sculpture. It is sculpting. You're sculpting on your canvas, mm. if you don't mind me saying so. Well, uh, I don't know how much, I, I sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm making relief painting or relief sculpture. Like this is much more relief sculpture than the And explain the other relief ones. sculpture too. Oh, um, it's it's just um, like when you're sculpting into wood and you're creating what look like three dimension could be three dimensional objects but they're they remain flat and um, like panels. Panels in in I think they did it a lot in medieval. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, medieval churches and stuff like that. But this is the updated version, people. This is <laughs> the exciting with color. Um, now this one is on canvas, right? Yes. The other ones were not. Were the they? other ones were all panel. Okay. So then, and can I show them the back for a minute? Sure. That even, and this is true, I think, of most of Anne's work, that she uses every inch that she can, and it makes it rich. I like to, to also paint around the edges because uh -huh. it, it just finishes it off. It gives it something, a, a nice finish, better yes. than a frame. Yes, I, that's what I think. I also think that there are some people who, I knew this one person who was very into frames and framing her work, and, um, and she did it very idiosyncratically, and. Uh, it, they were beautiful, but I don't have that same. I feel like in order to have a feel for something like a frame, I would need to be in a wood shop and, and be fluent with the tools that I would need to create the frame myself. So because by, it's by experience that I can understand things. So my experience here is painting and painting around the edges. Uh, just makes sense to and me. And this one I forgot to mention is making conversation. So Anne, we're almost at the end. Okay. And I just, any words, well you have inspired us through the whole, <laughs> it's very unusual to have an artist that gave so much, inst not instruction, but sharing about how you create. And I think your work is, is wonderful. The colors are exciting. It, it has a very, um, it's hard to explain. You have to come and see the work. That's what you need to do. And Anne will have, we'll give you information later about the reception. Mm -hmm. But she will be here for the month of April. For those of you who are doing your taxes, you can come and look at this piece, the stressed out piece, <laughs> to remind you of taxes. Mm -hmm. But um, your work is um, inspiring. It, and you really have to look at her work and, and walk away, and, and you'll see so many other images. Mm. And the artist just lets you really flow. That's a, that's a nice thing. Like you let us flow with your art and see so many different pieces. Well, it's my intention that people, um, people look at my work and, and they have to do a double take. I mean, 
um, my work is uh, a little complex, but I, I also want very much people to take away what they um, what they want or what they see. I, I don't want to impose necessarily my vision beyond what I've already put down. But you're sharing so much and that you just give us freedom to enjoy. Thank and you. I, it's, you're going to enjoy this. It's not just me demanding that you enjoy uh -huh. this. You will enjoy the work, the energy that it has. And I too don't like framing. And I had someone at one show say, you'll never sell anything, no frames. And I did sell. Uh -huh. And um, frames are just for some people, but not right, for folks right. like us. Right, We're unframable. Right. <laughs> we are unframable. Henry's laughing over there, but that's okay. Uh, the work is just, it's exciting. And again, let, I, I do this one. I'm identifying with this one today. Uh -huh. Stressed out, you know. Henry, are you stressed out? He's standing behind the, ca he's standing behind the camera, smiling. Mm -hmm. But this captures the moment. They should even put this in a commercial. Are you feeling like this? <laughs> and then it would be, like you could make millions, and then you don't have to send me much, just, just to mention <laughs> right, right, every right. so often. <laughs> but um, if you really want to know what it looks like, this is it. And I, it's their emotions. That's what I yes. like, that you've captured emotions on not canvas, but as compositions, you've captured a very, a very diverse range of emotions. And it's not overwhelming, because some people could do it and it would be so much that you're like, whoa, you gave me too much information. But this is like, you can identify. I think I have done, paint, made paintings that are Whoa, you've given me too much information. I just didn't bring them here today. Oh, okay. <laughs> but well, they're there. Maybe you will bring some. And uh, your work, oh, how often do you do a piece? Well, I try to make uh, at least one or two paintings a week. And it, she's it disciplined. Oh. And I also, I also do work in the studio doing oil pastels. So I work at Vernon Street. And that's one of our local studios, and they give a lot of support. It's a good place to, it, it, they'll show there at our um, open, studios. open studios, but it also is nice to have a community yes. where people can sometimes even give you extra stuff for your work. Um, so it, it's sharing. Yeah, there's a little place where people leave extra stuff that they don't want that people can take. I, wow, that's, just think, a bunch of pack rats together. <laughs> The perfect community for me. Mm -hmm. And then making it transferable. Well, I want to thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And again, um, we're going to be the month of April. We'll let you know on, on the website about the date of the uh, reception. And you can meet the artist and enjoy her work. So I want to thank you all. Uh, for being there. Thank you for letting us in your living rooms, dining rooms, wherever you're watching us. Tell your friends about us because we're exciting. I don't care what anyone says. We are yeah. exciting here at Art at Scat. And I want to thank the crew behind the cameras and they're handsome and beautiful and they've decided I look better in another pair of glasses. So that all works out too. And um, you know, I end every show with this. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Thank you. That was Henry, for those of you who thought I made him up. Yeah. And that means peace to you. And that's what we need right now. Yes, amen. With all that's going on. So April, take care. Oh, and if you're doing the, uh, the Easter egg hunts, good luck for finding those Easter eggs. And if you can't find them, then go to a candy store because they <laughs> always have them. And let's see. Oh, yeah, we have people behind there. Who's doing the show? Who's back? Adam is back there. We have an on-again, off-again relationship. Today it's an on-again. Later on it'll be an off-again. Mm -hmm. We have Erica who's hidden in the back and she takes care of a lot of stuff. We have Hans out front who takes, who you see his beaming face. Mm -hmm. He and Jason out there making you feel welcome. Are you disagreeing? No. That, okay, she was weeping though when I said <laughs> that. So, and um, I forgot your name again. 
Zoe. Zoe. There's not many Zoe's in the world, people. So Zoe is looking lovely behind the counter. I mean, behind the camera. And um, what's his? Oh, the laughing guy. Henry is looking very, very deb debonair behind the the camera there. And of course, our guest, lovely. Mm -hmm. See you next month.